This weekend, the G7 gathered in France to discuss the world's problems, of which there are one or two. <laughs> If you're not familiar, the G7 is an annual meeting of the six most advanced economies in the world. And also Italy goes. <laughs> but with the whole idea of globalism on the outs right now, you might wonder why the G7 even bothered. Based on how little actually happened this weekend, so did the G7. <laughs> At this point, the G7's like the last wedding of the season. No one wants to go, but you feel obligated, even though everyone knows this thing is only going to last a few more years. <laughs> And as with most weddings, there's always that one guy no one wants to get stuck talking to. <laughs> Prior to the G7, Trump had himself a big week. Between trying to buy Greenland and threatening to nuke hurricanes, he managed to go full anti-Semite. Trump said that American Jews who vote Democrat are disloyal to Israel, then endorsed himself as the second coming of God. <laughs> as a wise man once said, Oigewalt. But in fairness to Trump, if the two Jewish guys you spend most of your time with told you to lock kids in cages and marry the woman you love, you might be an anti-Semite too. This joke has been brought to you by our Jewish writers. They assured me it was okay. Yeah. They did. All that said, a couple of notable things did occur at the G7. Emmanuel Macron busted out a surprise guest, Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif. Wow, awkward. But hey, when you hear the words Iran and surprise in a sentence, a friendly drop by is the best case scenario. <laughs> they also pledged around $20 million to fight the fires plaguing the Amazon, which might sound like a lot of money, except for the fact that it isn't at all. 20 million? That's half of Trump's McMuffin budget. What? Come on. Get into it. The Beaverton. Only on CTV.